The main challenge is that of uh, a treatment gap. That is uh, the gap between uh, need for service and access and availability of that service, of, uh, of quality service especially. So you have a large population of people in need who are unable to access any care or receive any care at all. The way to do that is to uh, ensure that um, providers at the primary care level, uh, these may be non-physicians, but these are well-trained community workers, uh, are also trained to be able to uh, detect and treat and offer uh, uh, no, evidence-based treatment for the most commonly occurring mental health conditions. Uh, that is the, the, the most important uh, uh, single step that the government can take to ensure that uh, uh, care is uh, provided uh, for those who need it. Because in fact, there's no way in which you will uh, rely on specialists to provide care for the majority of people. It's not done anywhere anyway. Uh, and it's certainly less likely to be so in a situation where you have uh, you know, less than one psychiatrist to one million people. Part of the problem I see is that a lot of people do not know, they, they do not know about how to access or the need to even access mental health service. So they end up uh, not even seeking help uh, precisely when they need the, pro need the help. So you find out that there are a lot of people who have mental health problems who actually go to other uh, uh, places for, 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 for assistance. Some go to spiritual homes, some would um, go for all, so all sorts of advices that people give to them. So part of what we've been able to do is to actually do some publicity advocacy on radio and TV by how, having programs that actually offer advice and uh, give talks about mental health service and what we can do. So we find out that over the months, the past uh, 24 months, there have been an increase in the number of people that make use of the services that we have. Um, uh, part of what we've also been able to do is, within my service, I have nurses that work with me. So I've been able to work with them in such a way that they are able to do some forms of assessment and be able to provide uh, emergency services to patients before they see me. Unfortunately, those healers are not always uh, uh, delivering service in the most humane way. Uh, some of their practices are fairly you know, quite harmful. Uh, so uh, we, we need to do something about engaging with the, those providers, those healers, uh, to ensure that they can uh, improve the care and the service that they provide to those in need. And there's no way we can dispense with their service for a long time to come. I have patients, clients that are referred from churches, directly from churches, and after they've prayed for them, they still see a need that they should seek the help of, of a specialist so that while the prayer is being, is being seen to work, also the drugs you give will also be able to assist. So there, there, is, a, there is a need for more collaboration, and over the years that's, we've seen the need that we need to collaborate with traditional healers, with religious people, who, or who might even be the first port of call for, for some of these people that have mental health challenges.